That's a Christmas staple, the Pogues performing fairy tale of New York, complete with frontman Shane McGowan, their rep team. Well, decades after addiction to drink and drugs began to destroy it. <laughs> Seeing Dixon. <Dixie. laughs> you put Nashes in there, I'm not going to say Nashes. Yeah, no, no, that was already enough. You said that, it's Nashes. Well, they were Nashes, fair Bit term for Steve. Closer, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. It's such an image. He's, you know, he's the bad Steve is such an image of Shane McGowan. It is sort of part of him, but mm -hmm. uh, he's changed all that. Um, Shane's smile has been transformed with a new set of pearly whites from Dilly Reports. <laughs> since 1987, but this year all Shane McGowan wanted was his two front teeth, and the rest of it, of course. The folk singer has always had a tricky relationship with dentists. Everybody was scared of the dentist in those days. When I was very small, I had teeth taken out by the string round the tooth and then put on the door handle there, and they wouldn't tell you what they were going to do, they would just bang the door, you know. This is the result of many years of hard living, drink and drug abuse. But this year, long-term partner Victoria went online looking for a dentist. After hundreds of replies, they settled on local dentist, Dr. Dara Mulrooney. What surprised me was that Shane actually wanted teeth. Because I had just assumed he had no interest, but he did want teeth and he was determined he was going to get them. Shane has had six months of treatments and procedures, including an eight-hour operation to drill in the implant. But his decision to get his teeth fixed has won the approval of his celebrity mates. Really thought about the teeth when he would laugh, because his laugh was... You know, his mouth spread real wide, and, you know, and there's this, you know, the, the, the tunnel, the cave. Uh, we're working on the fabrication of Shane's teeth and the design. I see you're making them brown. It looks good. Not one for convention, Shane insisted on a little bit of bling. Well, it is Christmas after all. Dawn Dilly, Sky News. Well, Shane's uh, partner, Victoria, joins us live from Dublin now. I um, don't know if you saw the piece going out there that, that we've cut this morning. Um, we're talking about a bit of bling. What, what does he have put on for his, his new teeth? They're no diamonds, are they? No diamonds, that actually would have been a really good idea, wouldn't it? But I heard a funny story that Mick Jagger had an emerald put in his tooth and people used to come up to him and say, I think he might have a piece of spinach in your tooth. <laughs> not, <laughs> so I think <laughs> not the look. So yeah, I think the gold one is great. I really love it. I'm actually thinking about having one myself. You were saying in the piece that um, you thought you'd have to sort of convince him, but he actually wanted to do this himself. Why, why the change of heart? Because he is associated with having not fantastic teeth, and it's kind of part of his image, isn't it? Yeah, but I don't think that was ever deliberate on his part. I don't think he decided, oh, I know, I'll just be the one with the bad teeth. <laughs> you know? um, I think it, the, the teeth were mainly kicked out in fights or punched out. And eventually, um, he got hit with a piece of scaffolding very hard, and that um, that finished them off. So it wasn't uh, a deliberate choice. And he really did want teeth, apparently. So here we are. We got him. For <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, for Christmas, my two front teeth. I mean, it didn't serve him too badly, because, I mean, you were still attracted to him with, with his lack of teeth and um, not fantastically uh, pearly white. Yeah, but they, they weren't actually too bad. When I met him, they were kind of cute. I thought they were very cute, actually. I couldn't understand what the fuss was about. I liked them. <laughs> I think an acquired taste is how you might, you might describe that. So you're not disappointed now that he's, he's changed them, are you? No, I think they're gorgeous. I'm really impressed. Really impressed. Eight hours, though. Um, that was the length of one of the, the operations to have the implants, because he's had implants put in. That is a lot to go through. I've had one implant and I barely recovered from that. I mean, he really went through the mill getting his new set of teeth. Yeah, yeah um, I can't imagine. I mean, I think, like, because I've got my teeth are crowned and that took a couple of hours. And I think that's as long as I could stand in the chair with my mouth open. You know what it's like. 
Um, so eight hours and then another eight and then finally another four or five. It was a very, very long operation. Wow. But he's a really patient guy, he's super patient and he's got um, a high pain threshold obviously. Well. He must have. He must have. He's um at the end of the documentary. He does sing uh, "Fairy Tale New York" actually with his teeth. Does it make a marked difference to how he delivers the song? No, I think that actually it, it's not the best version he's ever done because he was <laughs> uncomfortable. I think um, the dentist said it's going to take about six months to feel as though they're his real teeth. So they're still feeling like he's got a mouth full of strange objects. Like I think he said it's like having a small factory inside your mouth. Oh dear. <laughs> well, let's hope he gets used to them and he grows into them or they grow into him by the next time uh, he performs. So that documentary on tonight at 10 o'clock, um, Sky Arts documentary. Thanks for speaking to us this morning. Thanks. <laughs> Still to come.